Welcome back to Batman Garage. Uh, I've got this 2014 Lincoln MKX here at the house. It's got a uh, soft brake pedal. I'm going to try to get a video of what that looks like and jump into diagnosis with y'all. So if you haven't met me before, my name is Patrick and I appreciate you stopping by my channel and checking out a video. Uh, we're jumping into the diagnosis of this soft brake pedal. Um, so I've done several different video researches um, sp specifically for this model. Uh, some people say that the ABS valves can stick on these. Uh, I don't believe that's the case in my in my vehicle here. Um, I did use four scan and did an ABS bleed. Uh, we'll get into doing that a little bit later once we get done with the repairs. Um, and then some people also talk about going out and initiating an ABS panic stop um, to try to get the valves to move and then unstick themselves. I was did one forward, two reverse stops, and was unsuccessful in changing the feel of the brake pedal at all. Um, so we're going to jump into what this looks and feels like, and then we'll uh, start replacing some parts here. All right, so I'm going to start the car here. Now, with the brake pedal at its normal position here, you can feel it like start to get a little, like right about here, it'll start to engage a little bit, but it just stays soft. And at the very, very bottom, you get a little bit of pedal, so a little bit of feedback. So there is a little bit of progression difference there where, um, like I said, when you start off initially, um, you can feel it change just slightly. So typically that means um, we have a bad master cylinder. Um, so there's a basically seals in, inside the master cylinder that are, are leaking uh, pressure past them. At least that's my initial assessment of this. Uh, the fact that I did the ABS bleed with the scan tool and then also did um, initiated some panic stops and nothing has changed on the car um, makes me think that it's not a mechanical failure within the ABS pump or ABS uh, system. So we're going to dive into doing a master cylinder, which is not very fun on these cars because it's tucked way up under the wiper cowl, um, but shouldn't be that bad, but um, it does take a little bit of work to get to it. And then we'll have to bench bleed it and then we'll have to. And opening the hood is on this side right there. So it kind of lines up with this third grill bar here, but it's not on the center like you would normally expect it to be on most cars. So pulling the air box out, you can either do a flathead screwdriver here on the intake duct or a eight millimeter socket, which is a little bit easier to keep it engaged than a flathead in my opinion. So I'm gonna pull that loose and then we'll have to pull the uh, mass airflow sensor off over here. There's a red clip on the bottom, which you slide outward, and then in the middle of the connector, there's a squeeze part here. So there's what there's what we're looking at. Obviously, you won't be able to see that, but the red tab slides out and then squeeze in the center, and then it'll release. Now, and then we have a. Probably breather connection here should just be sitting in there just kind of wiggle it back and forth and then air box should be ready to come out uh, I'm gonna go ahead and separate the box just so it's easier to pull out I'm gonna pull the lid with the intake tube so I'm gonna pull out on the tube and then lift up on the lid this way and see what we look like and then underneath the air box, I start to pull it off. Underneath the uh, this air plenum here, there's another connection here. It's a PCB connection. Um, another blind connector. You got to squeeze. There's a little tab underneath. Uh, this little square tab, and you got to push it to the side, and then the clip will loosen up, and you can pull the hose off. But this should be ready to come out now. I also pulled the harness uh, fur tree clip for the mass airflow there. That'll be ready to come out. Uh, 
Um, so we probably don't need to pull the rest of the air box off to get the battery out. We should be ready to pull the battery as it is. Uh, so we should have the battery clamps, which are going to be eight millimeters. And then uh, battery hold down, it looks like is also, an, oh, sorry, this is a 10. And that's a 10. And then the battery hold down is an eight. A little mix, mixed bag of assorted parts. Battery hold down is right there on the side of the battery. Long bolt holds on a plastic wedge. So we are getting our first look at the master cylinder there. So this is the brake reservoir. And then this is the master cylinder down in here. Uh, so we got brake lines coming off of it. Uh, flexible brake lines. And those are going to be your main pressure lines that go to the ABS valve, or ABS block, which is even further down. Um, so we have a level sensor here. Um, looks like the, it's a squeeze tab on the bottom to remove that guy. I'm probably going to go ahead and pull, I'm going to pull this connector off here and pull this ground cable off just to get a little bit more slack in the um, in the battery grounds. Not that you need to do that, but it'll make for easier hand presentation, video presentation for y'all. All right, that makes that a lot more easy to see what's going on. So there's just a 10 millimeter nut there uh, for a tree clip for the ground harness and then the battery connection has another center squeeze here. Um, so no big deal, but Make, I don't think you would need to do all that. It'll just make it easier for me to show you what's going on in here. So we got the level sensor, which has another center squeeze on it. This one's mounted a little bit far for, forward of the other one. So this one's right in here, the little ridged area. It comes right off. We'll get it tucked off to the side, out of the way, and then we'll have... Our brake lines, they look like probably 15 millimeters. And then we'll have our uh, nuts that are on the firewall or on the booster itself. But we'll start with the uh, brake lines. Uh, before I crack those loose, I'm going to lay some absorbent towels down. Uh, just help ca catch any drips. All right, so I got my uh, 15 millimeter lines loose i uh, just cracked them loose a little bit i don't want to start dripping until i have until it's ready to come out just to minimize my mess i have a 13 millimeter bolt up here that is going to be a deep well 13 it has to you, you have a standard socket you won't be able to reach the nut one there and then one down below that it's real hard to get to basically you got one at the 1 32 o'clock position and one at like 6 37 o'clock position um 13 millimeter deep wells so I'm going to go ahead and remove the bottom one completely. Uh, they're pretty tight, so you're going to need a longer handle ratchet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove the bottom one completely, and then I'll remove the top one. And the reason I saved the easier one for last is it's just that. It's easier, and I don't have to fight holding the master cylinder in place while I'm also dealing with the bottom one that's much harder to get to. So that's the plan for that, and then I will show you what it looks like when we get it out. So now, before I put this thing back in, I want to make a point of showing you that actual brake booster, the square drive in the middle here, uh, right in here. Uh, you need to make sure that your master cylinder lines back up on that, because that's your actual plunger that pushes the master cylinder. And if you don't have it lined up, it's going to bind up and not work correctly. And then you get to redo this whole thing all over again. So here's our master cylinder removed. Uh, Disregard the fact that I already had transmission fluid in my drain pan. Uh, your fluid should be the kind of gold color that's coming out of it there. Um, and I'm slowly dripping off. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull off my cap. And that should help speed up the process a little bit. Now, there is a uh, bolt on the side that holds the reservoir in place. It is what's called a reverse Torx. If you don't happen to have a reverse Torx set, you generally you can use a 12-point socket on it. Uh, so I'll give you all the sizes that'll work on that. 
and show you what that looks like. So while we're letting the reservoir drain out and finish dripping there, uh, I'm gonna go and check out my new part. So that's our plunger side that needs to get lined back up. I'll show you that in a little bit. And then this is where our reservoir sits. And then this is where our brake lines come out. Uh, so it appears to be the same part. Came with some new hardware. We're gonna get the master cylinder reservoir pulled off, the brake reservoir off, the reverse torques here is either going to be an E7, which is reverse Torx E7. Uh, I also found that a 7 millimeter bolt, a uh, 6 point, and a 732 fit it. So all three of those options, if you got one of those, you could probably get this dude off. It's not super tight. Um, and it's just a little pin bolt that holds, keeps it from coming off the grommets. Um, so we'll get this guy removed and then I'll pop the reservoir off. All right, so the pin removed, like I said, just a little bolt. And then the brake reservoir just sits on top of the, so I'm going to come in here with the pry bar and just kind of pry up on it. I'm going to use two hands, but it should just sit in the top of that reservoir. There's two, uh, ports that I showed you earlier. So even after letting this thing drip down and dry until it was done, or done dripping i still made a big mess <laughs> um so reservoir is going to get reused mass cylinder all that's going to get replaced um i th think that the new one is going to come with this o-ring on the front on the booster side we'll just double check and make sure that's actually there and we'll get this thing reassembled here so i got my new one unboxed here i went ahead and sprayed a little bit of lube in here just to make sure that those um, the new, when the reservoir goes on, it should go on a little smoother and it did come with a new seal here. Um, so if we're in good shape. We'll pop this thing together, put our pin bolt back in it, and then we'll be bench bleeding it after that. All right. I've got my master cylinder clamped in a vise just to hold it so we can ble bleed it out. I uh, waited all day to get the, uh, the Dorman ble master bleed kit, uh, generic. So these will thread into the ports on the um, the exit of the master cylinder and then we'll wrap a hose up to the top to just return the fluid back to the reservoir and then we'll cycle the booster a bunch of times. So I'm gonna get this thing set up and show you what it looks like. Alright, so here's what I've learned with this setup. Um, so there are two different um, red fittings that are the largest. Uh, you're looking for the 916 by 20. Uh, the other one is a 916 by 18, and the thread pitch is, is too coarse for what you need in the master cylinder. Um, so that's the wrong one. You're looking for the 916 by 20. Um, so once you get it in the vise and you get these set up and you get your hoses run, go ahead and fill this thing completely full with brake fluid. And then what you need to do is run your hoses to where they're submerged in the fluid as well. Um, so if you don't, what happens is when you activate the plunger and you release it, you'll actually backfeed air backwards and you end up just not doing enough work of actually bleeding it. So once you get the hoses completely submerged, you'll just cycle through basically a bun bunch of fluid through it. Um, most old school methodology told you 100 times cycle the master cylinder before it's ready. Um, the nice thing about the clear hoses, you can actually see if air is leaving or not. Um, which is actually how I came up, found out the, the backfeeding problem. Um, but yeah, so make sure that you have this set up in the same way so that you don't have any issues going forward. Um, what I ended up doing for the plunger is I just took my, I just have a Phillips screwdriver and I went into the end of the plunger the same way that the master, or the booster activates on the, on the, the plunger of the master cylinder and just press in and release over and over and over. Now when you first start it'll press in really easy. By the time you get all the air out of it, it should be a pretty firm press. So that's good. That means we got all the air out of it. So now I need to take this over to the car and I'm going to put my cap on so I try not to lose any extra fluid uh, gravity feeding through the booster or through the master cylinder and I'm going to have to pull these lines off 
and then install my lines and then bleed the car from there. So at this point I'm going to remind you to go ahead and open your bag of new hardware uh, since I forgot. I've made it a little more difficult one-handed holding the booster. I'm sorry, one-handed holding the master cylinder so I could get this thing fit in here. So I have it bolted back in here. My two 13 millimeter nuts, the 1, 1 30, 2 o'clock, and then the 6 30, 7 o'clock, the two corners. And I tucked my brake lines up in the wiper cowl up here. And that'll, or the bleeding lines, and that'll just help me keep uh, where I don't lose the fluid that's in the hose while I'm uh, working in here, getting it tightened down. So next step is going to be backing off my bleeder lines and reinstalling the uh, brake pressure lines. Um, so I'm going to do one time, one of them at a time. And I'm going to start with the back one because it's going to be harder to get to. And then we'll do the front one after that. Um, the the brake lines themselves were uh, the the red bleeder was a five eighths is what I found that fit it easily quickly and it's just a hair bigger than the 15 uh, used for the brake lines. We'll get this first one out of the way and then we'll get started on the second one. Uh, before you do your second one, I would recommend that you go ahead and plug in your batter, your uh, level sensor again. This should be the square one with the two pins and that way you don't forget it. This guy was our battery monitoring on the negative cable, which you may or may not have removed. So now we can break this guy loose and get started on it. Got my second line put on. Uh, before I put the battery back in and air box and all that stuff, I'm going to go ahead and actually bleed the brakes for real. Um, and that way I don't end up having to do this work twice. Uh, so we're going to get this thing bled out at least initially and then we may put the battery in and do some uh, ABS bleeding and then do a final bleed. We'll see how that goes um, But for now, we'll go ahead and do a, a first round bleeding on the on all four corners So I briefly talked about this in the beginning of my video um, what I did was um, with the four scan program on my laptop I was able to do the ABS bleed um, beforehand and that's how I uh, took an educated guess that it was not going to be a uh, ABS control unit uh, or whatever you want to call it, ABS valve block. Um, so I'm going to get into this car real quick and show you what I'm doing here uh, on the back side of it. So after replacing the master cylinder we'll do the ABS bleed in here and then we'll do a final bleed on the car as well. Well, it's another day. We'll make another attempt at these brakes. So the master cylinder definitely feels better, but it still has a really soft spot right in the middle of the pedal. Um, so my next game of, of action here, I'm going to pull the ABS control unit out of the car completely and see if I can't do something to get... I, there's got to be a valve stuck in the ABS control unit. It's the only other thing it can be. Um, so I'm not going to really repeat all the steps, but I'm going to pull my air box, pull my battery. I may see if I pull a battery tray or something out too but basically everything we did yesterday has got to come back out on top well that wasn't terrible we're caught back up to where we were yesterday I'm gonna go ahead and pull the battery tray which is the 10 millimeter here here and here so the next now the battery tray is out the next thing we're gonna do is take off this bracket down here there's three eight millimeter bolts for the shift lever linkage so there's one that I'm on right there, two, and then three in the front. And um, you can either choose to sh pull the shifter cable off 
there's two little plastic tabs on each one on each side and then the cable comes straight up or you can actually just take the whole assembly and just kind of slide it to the side a little bit uh, that'll make your life a lot easier when you go to remove this bracket next and whenever you do the pull in the ABS module because this cable will be out of the way and this sharp corner of this bracket will be out of the way um, so pull those eight millimeter bolts and either pull the bracket out actually if you pull the shifter off you actually stuff the whole bracket with it with the cable everything together either assembled or not, or not assembled shove it all underneath and get it out of your way so this is going to seem counterintuitive but the next thing I want you to take off is this bracket right here, which holds the battery tray on. There are two 10 millimeter bolts that go into the frame rail. They are not easy to get to, but it'll make your life a lot easier getting back behind it to get to the ABS valve block after that. Um, but it, it's a tough spot because of that stupid transmission cooler line that's right there. Um, but if you get this bracket off, it'll make your life a lot easier. So I've got the first brake line off. It's a 15 millimeter uh, nut, and I've got it, the uh, brake line zip tied out of the way so I can get access to the other ones a little more easily. Uh, so the next two are 13s. These two on the side are 13s, and the very back one is gonna be a 15. Um, so just take them off in order. Um, the, the second 13 that's back here is going to be the one that's on the front side wraps over the front there's a little protective uh, rubber dude that sits on the ABS motor um, but basically they all kind of only go on one way so don't really worry too much they they're bent in a way that they only pretty much go on one place um, and then I I capped off my brake line with with the both the 15 so I'm going to cap off with a little rubber cap and that'll just help keep from draining brake fluid out of the reservoir which will then make it a little bit faster to bleed it when we get it back together so once you get to this point you kind of have two options you can either pull the entire bracket off which involves a 13 there a 13 down low and there's a 13 way in the back back there that's option a option b is pulling the abs block off of the uh, bracket itself which involves a torx 30 a t30 and there's two of them that are mounted vertically uh, upward behind there's a there's a, a black wall uh, on that bracket it's behind that um, so neither option is really that fun there's your black wall uh, the two screws are just behind that vertically um, like I said neither option is great uh, I should... so all the way around the perimeter of the uh, ABS control unit is torque screws there's four of them um, I need I use they are uh, Torx 20 T20. Um, I used this uh, screwdriver style bit um, like this guy, um, so I could get a straight shot at it. This is like a hex drive. Um, that worked a lot better than trying to use a standard socket. Um, you end up kind of coming at it at an angle like that. You're just more likely to strip it out. Uh, if you have to use it this way, just be careful. Keep a lot of down pressure on it. Um, but you got to pull those four out of the perimeter of that of the of the body of the ABS unit, and then the plastic control unit part will separate from the ABS valve block side. Um, so we'll get that separated, and I'll show you what that looks like, and get it transferred onto the new one. A little bit of jiggling and pulling it out. Uh, so when we go back in, we need to be careful. These two c contacts. That's going to run the ABS motor itself. Um, everything else in here is running the ABS valves. Uh, you have three valves per uh, brake line and um, like I said we'll, we'll get this thing put back together with the new one. And here's the part number for the new one and here's what it looks like coming out of the box. Shocked face. <laughs> uh, so that that's just a block of foam sitting over the over the valves and everything so that, that'll slide off just like the control unit did so then we'll slide the control unit on top making sure that we get those contacts slid down the center correctly and then we'll put the screws back in it
and there should be just a little bit of a squeezing together you want to make sure that you get it pretty well squeezed flush before you start ramming bolts into it because um, you don't want to break something by strip or strip out a screw by forcing it together by, via the screws they're just there for holding they're not there for clamping uh, so we'll get these screws started in here basically wrist wrist tight is how I would normally describe something like that and we'll get our bracket transferred over if you remove the bracket with the car if not then you're ready to put it in straight away and I got my two Torx 30s put back on, my brackets reinstalled, ready to go back in the car now. And actually when I started bleeding this thing, I got to go back into it another time, pull the battery and battery tray again. Uh, these brake lines weren't quite as tight as they should have been and had a little bit of a leak on the uh, pressure lines coming off the master at the... Um, at the ABS block so when you tighten those tighten them a little bit snugger than you think they probably need to be um, probably about the point where your wrench is wanting to slip off or spread open is <laughs> like I said they're, they're pretty tight so uh, don't be afraid to, to really crank down on those so hindsight's always 2020 on repairs but from what I estimated re retail repairs would have been about twenty five hundred dollars for this um, and I would and the the brake ABS valve unit is $1,000 retail by itself, um, and I would much rather gamble $100, $150 master cylinder every time, every day of the week than gamble a $1,000 um, ABS valve block. So, you know, it is, it, it's a lot of money. Um, my cost came out to you know, roughly about half off uh, of compared to retail dealership environment type of situation, um, but still a big chunk of money to fix the brakes but in the end it's worth it i did go out and drive it and it stops wonderfully it's 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 awesome it's it's so much better than it was and feel great putting them back on the road with safe brakes again so i appreciate y'all watching another video of mine and uh, watching the repair process along the way for this one and i will catch you in the next one